This is the first video of Corp Your Two Challenge Questions. This is chapter one, which is some complex number stuff. I'm going to prove this by induction. So just set n equal one, and we'll show that e to the i theta to the power one is obviously r e to the i theta, which is uh, the case when you put ones here as well. So it's true for n equals one, and then we're going to assume it's true for n equals k. So this is the thing that we can assume to be true. And then we'll just investigate k plus one in which you can write this this. This is obviously e to the i theta, r e to the i theta times k times another lot of r e to the i theta. Of course, this by the assumption step is just equal to this here. Um, and now this is all just multiplying. So this is the same as r to the k times r, which is r to the k plus one. And then e to the i k theta times e to the i theta, where you can add the little powers together. And you get this, which you can factorize out of k uh, or an i theta from to leave behind k plus one. And therefore, this is this, which matches with this. Write the usual thing that you do at the end of an induction proof. To say that you're done because of you know the stuff and that and yeah that's good uh given further this thing show this thing here so okay we're gonna have to do induction again we are allowed to use this so if n equals one um this thing here well this is just a complex number z right so it just it straight up tells me z to the minus n is one over z to the end so this thing here if n equals one is just one over that thing there based on this here now i can split this into one over r times one over e to the i theta and one over r, r is just a number so that's just r to the minus one and this thing here based on this step backwards because e to the i theta is just a complex number i'm um, using it backwards i can put it back into there and i think i end up with this and uh and yeah cool i think that's good to go um so yeah cool and uh next uh so that's true for n equals one and then we can say assume true for n equals k um, well, okay, so that's going to be this step here, or this assumption here. Uh, investigate k plus 1, and we're going to put k plus 1 into there, which makes brackets, or minus brackets, k plus 1, which is minus k minus 1. So that's the same as this, the minus k, times this, the minus 1. This, by the assumption step, is this. And this, by the case where n equals 1 holds, which we already tested, is equal to that there. And now, again, just combine these two things together in the same way as before, and you end up with the, with the thing done. Uh, next one used without using Euler's re relation. So Euler says e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. Not allowed to use that. Show this here. So I can use what we learned last question, which is 1 over z to the n is z to the minus n. So I can write this like this, I guess. And now I can I can use De Morva's to say this is r to the n. They haven't stopped me using De Morva. R to the n and then, and then uh, cos n and sine n here. And now this is a difficult spot. How are we going to get cos minus n thetas out here and sine n minus n thetas from this here. And how do we get rid of this denominator? Well, often to get rid of denominators, you times by complex conjugates, right? Um, or conjugates like rationalizing thirds or realizing denominators. Um, and that actually works quite well here. And the reason it does is because when you think about expanding this denominator here, you get cos squared, cross terms cancel, minus i squared sine squared. But i squared is minus 1, so that's plus sine squared. But of course, cos squared plus sine squared is 1, and so that just all goes away, which is really nice. This r to the n on the bottom can just go to the top and become r to the minus n. And now what do we do with this to make it match this? Well, we just need to use the even and oddness of functions of cos and sine here. So cos is an even function. So cos of minus theta is the same as cos of theta. So I can just shove a minus in there at literally no cost. So that's great. That just matches. Now, sine of theta is a, um, a, a an, an odd function. So minus sine of minus theta is equal to sine of theta. So in other words, if you want to shove a minus into the argument here, you need to put a minus in front of sine as well, which conveniently cancels with this minus in the front here, and you get a plus, and it therefore matches exactly what we need to get. So that was quite cool as well. Next question, find the six roots of this. Um, so I'm just going to be very lazy about this. I know that if I take a complex number like this and I raise to the power 6, that just times the argument by 6. So if I want to do that and get all the way around to 1, I'm going to need a complex number that has already a modulus of 1 because I don't want the modulus to increase or anything. I just want it to spin around in a circle. So I need a, argument, I need a modulus of 1. And I need an argument of, well, the whole thing is 2 pi, right? So if I divide that by 6, I get pi over 3. And if that's pi over 3, then when I times it by 6, I get pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, and so on, and you get 6 of them, and you get to this thing here. So e to the i pi over 3 is clearly a solution. But also, if you go over to 2 pi over 3, um, when you times that by 6, you just go around twice, and you still get to here, so that's still going to work. But also, if you go backwards, minus pi over 3, and times that by 6, you just go back to 1 the other way around, um, and likewise, minus 2 pi over 3. And e to the i pi, of course, if you start here and times this by 6, you get 
one, two, three, four, and then you just keep going around to get to six here. So I think all of those work. And then finally, if you start on one itself, of course, one to the six is six. And so those are our solutions here. I could have said this was e to the zero i theta uh, or i uh, pi over three, but it doesn't really matter. Good. So I think that's all that. And I went for minuses just because it told me to here. Hence, show the solutions to this are this. Um, so, okay, I firstly, I, like it says hence. So, how do we re relate this to this here? Well, this is about finding roots of unity here or sixth roots of unity. This isn't, but I think I can make it so by just dividing by set to the six because that makes a one here. And then if I kind of undistribute this power six here to make this, now I've got this thing to the power six is one. So, therefore, this complex number here is up plus one over z must be these complex numbers because when raised to the power six they make one so i can set these to these i think i first actually just said this is one plus one over z um, and now i can say okay this thing here has to be one of these things here so i can say that and i'm going to do something a bit weird here and i didn't do this originally but i'm going to say k is any of those things um, which is completely legit i think um, because uh, you know um, essentially i haven't gone with these ones here i've just gone for different equivalent ones around the circle um, so I have gone, for example, minus 1 and minus 2, but then minus 3 is, or minus 3 thirds is here, so that's equivalent to this one here. And likewise, minus 4, it, 4 thirds is up here somewhere, which is equivalent to this one and so on. Uh, you'll see why I've done that in a second. I couldn't see any other way of getting around this because I'm not smart enough, so I just did that to start with. Um, next, what I said, of course, was if you times all this by z, you get this, and then you can rearrange and factorize out, and you get this here. And now I need to try and write this in the form cot, and this is something from a couple of chapters ago before this question actually came up. But what I need to do is I need to try and force this result in here to get a sign in there. So, okay, there's a few ways of doing this, but quite a nice way is to take the denominator and factorize out and e to the k pi over 6. Because those two things multiply obviously to make this, and then you have a minus one of them here to cancel it to make this. And now this here is just this thing here. So we've got 2i sine k pi over 6. We can write that as. And of course, I can shove this result up to the top by just putting a minus here. And now this is just a complex number by Euler's relation. I can write this as cos of this thing here plus i sine of this thing here with the minus, of course. And I'll get this here. Uh, now, what can I do here? Well, I can shove this or I can split this fraction in half to get this over this plus this over this, um, which is not what I've done. I first actually taken, I, I've done the cos even um, sine odd thing where this minus doesn't matter because cos is an even function, and this minus does, it needs to go to the front because sine is an odd function. So I've done that first. Now I think I'm going to cut the thing in half to make this. Um, cos over sine is cot, which is great. That's where that's going to come from. And sine over sine is obviously 1. The i's cancel as well, and you end up with a minus a half. So that's super great. So we get this, which is this, um, which doesn't quite work. So this i here, to rationalize that, sorry, to realize it, I need to times by i, I over i. That gets an i on the top, but it gets a minus one on the bottom, so that's where this minus comes from. Now, this is almost correct, but notice how it's not quite correct. And this is where, do you remember I said k had to be minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Um, this is where I can claim that if that's true for k is minus these things, um, well, when you put a minus into cot, cot is an odd function. So if you put a minus into cot, you can just take the minus and put it over here instead, which will cancel with this. So I think I can just get rid of this minus and say it's this as long as k is these things instead. Um, because putting minuses in here essentially just puts a minus out there to cancel this, make it a plus, and then you're putting pluses here with a plus there, which is what I've said here. So I think I'm allowed to do that, and I think that's where this uh, where this comes from. Um, I'm unsure why they haven't got a zero. Who cares? Anyway, show the points. Oh, this is interesting. So this is from a different... Um, this was from the mixed exercise. It was a chapter after this question here, which was just answered. Um, but you'll notice it's the same question, right? Like he's literally halfway through my working here. I wrote that, and I it's back here somewhere. It's, there it is. I wrote it. Z plus one over Z to the power six. Um, so the solutions to this are this. I, I just wrote them, and these are on a straight line because there's the real part it's minus a half. There's the imaginary. So whatever cot of this is, I, I really don't care. It, it's all on this line. So this was a very trivial question. Um, based on the fact that we previously solved this and got this here, uh, and so we're done.